Hello everyone, I am back with the second video of the video series on class 10th science life processes and in this video we are going to learn about nutrition in plants. Just the way we human beings need food to get energy to sustain ourselves, in a similar way the plants need food to sustain themselves and if plants do not exist then none of the other organisms would exist because we all depend on plants directly or indirectly for our food. So it is very important that plants are able to prepare their own food. So let us look at the nutrition in plants. So how do they prepare their own food? By a process called photosynthesis. Now let us see what is photosynthesis. The term photosynthesis, photo means light, synthesis means to prepare. So that means plants prepare their food in presence of light and that process is known as photosynthesis. So in this topic we are going to talk about what is the food that they prepare, how do they prepare that food, I mean what exactly are the things which are needed by the plant in order to prepare their food. So one thing is from the name photosynthesis we can see that it needs sunlight. The other thing it needs for photosynthesis is water and another very important thing which it needs is chlorophyll. So let us talk about in detail about the requirements for performing photosynthesis. So process by which green plants prepare their own food in presence of sunlight that is known as photosynthesis. So where does photosynthesis take place? It takes place in the leaves of plants. So that means the prepare, this process of preparing food happens in the leaves and the food which is prepared is stored in the leaves. So what are the requirements for photosynthesis? The very first requirement is chlorophyll. So what is chlorophyll? It is a green colored pigment which is present inside a cell organelle called chloroplast. Do you all remember while we were studying the lesson on cell in class 9, we talked about plant cell and animal cell, right? So inside the plant cell, we had a cell organelle called chloroplast, right? We talked about plastids and the kind of plastids which are green in color were right? chloroplasts, right? So inside that cell organelle chloroplast, we have a green colored pigment which is known as chlorophyll. Now the presence of this pigment chlorophyll is extremely important for the for performing photosynthesis. So how, do, how does this chlorophyll actually look like? So here you can look at the cross section of a leaf. So here you can see a leaf. So this thickness of the leaf, so you can imagine how, I mean the thickness of the leaf is so very less, right? Now if you observe that particular cross section, so only in this much thickness you have so many things. So that thickness actually consists of the upper epidermis. Epidermis constitutes the outer layer, right? The epidermis cells. So this is the epidermis and after the epidermis we have the chloroplast. So you can see here some green colored pigments. So they are the chloroplast and inside this chloroplast, I mean the green color is contributed by this pigment called chlorophyll. So even if you observe a leaf under a microscope, you would see that there are some green patches on the leaves. So those green patches are nothing but the presence of chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is one important requirement for performing photosynthesis. Next is sunlight, carbon dioxide and water. So now how do plants get each of these things? So chlorophyll it is already present in plant leaves. So they do not need to get it from outside. Sunlight, so that is anyways naturally available to the plants. Carbon dioxide, it gets it from the air. So how does it get it from the air? Now it gets carbon dioxide from air through small pores which are present on, it, on the leaves of the plants known as stomata. So we will talk about stomata in the next slide. And the fourth requirement is water. So how does it get water? So one natural source of water is the soil because the roots of the plants are deeply uprooted in the soil and they can fetch water from the soil. 
so water water can be obtained from soil and on top of that you would have seen that we also externally water the plants so that it can get sufficient water so these are the four things which are extremely needed for performing the process of photosynthesis so what does this chlorophyll pigment do chlorophyll actually absorbs the solar energy and this solar energy is then converted into the food so the solar energy is basically synthesized to get the food so these are the requirements for photosynthesis now let us talk about stomata as i said carbon dioxide will be obtained from air through stomata so let us now talk about stomata now food is prepared is stored in the form of starch so I, I have already spoken about starch right what is starch it is a polysaccharide that means too many glucose molecules together form starch so the food which is prepared is in the form of starch and the starch is stored in the plants so what are the raw materials the requirements of for, for photosynthesis are chlorophyll sunlight water and carbon dioxide so let us now talk about stomata. So what are stomata? These are the tiny pores present on the surface of leaves. So when I spoke about chlorophyll, where are chlorophyll presents? When we look at the cross section of the thickness of a leaf, we find the cell organelles called chloroplast. Inside that chloroplast is present chlorophyll. But when I talk of stomata, they are present on the surface of a leaf. So on the surface of the leaf, let us suppose if this is a leaf, on the surface itself, we will have small pores, extremely tiny pores, which are not visible with naked eye. So these pores are called stomata. Now gaseous exchange occurs through them. So whenever you have pores, exchange of gases can take place. So this is how the plant will actually absorb carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is present in the atmosphere. So the plants can take in carbon dioxide through these small pores on the leaves. Guard cells govern the opening and closing of stomata. Now, another important thing is that the gaseous exchange, which I was talking about just now, it happens. There are many other ways by which gaseous exchange can take place. For example, gaseous exchange can happen through roots. It can also happen through stem and it can also happen through stomata. But majority of this happens through stomata. Now, Due to the presence of these small pores, the way carbon dioxide can enter inside the leaves, in a similar way, water can also go out through that small pores because if there are so many pores on the surface of a leaf, water which, we, which the plant actually uh, takes it for itself, may much, uh, a good portion of the water can escape out from these pores. So too much of water loss can happen. So therefore, these pores should not be kept open all the time. So in order to prevent excessive water loss from the plants, there is a technique by which the, the stomata remains open sometimes and it gets closed when it is not needed. When intake of carbon dioxide is not needed, in that case the stomata remains closed. So this opening and closing of stomata is governed by what is known as guard cells. So it is a pair of cells which actually control the opening and closing of stomata. Let us look at how the guard cells look like. So here you can see two bean shaped cells, two bean shaped cells, they are the guard cells. So here this gap is the stomata or the stomatal pore. Right and now if you want to see chlorophyll also you can see the green colored organelle that is chlorophyll inside the chlorophyll, inside this chloroplast is present the chlorophyll. Right? Now what happens, how the guard cells actually control the opening and closing. Now when water enters inside the uh, small pore, what happens, the guard cells swell. So they actually relax. So when they swell up, the opening also increases. So the pore opens. Now when water is taken out, when water is taken out from here, in that case what happens, the guard cells will shrink and when the guard cells shrink, this stomatal pore also shrink. So the stomata gets closed. So whether the stomatal pore will be opened or closed is governed by the guard cells. So it is actually governed by the contraction or expansion of the guard cells. When the guard cells expand, the stomata opens. When the guard cells contract, the stomatal pore closes. 
right so so far what did we see we saw that plants obtain their own food how do they obtain by process of photosynthesis what for what all do they need for photosynthesis they need carbon dioxide they need sunlight they need chlorophyll they need water so these are the four things which they need so how do they obtain carbon dioxide from air mostly through stomata which are present on the leaves how do they obtain chlorophyll chlorophyll is something which is already present in the leaves of the plants sunlight it is naturally present during the daytime it can receive sunlight and water which is present in the soil and also externally also we water the plants so let us now look at the equation for photosynthesis so as we have already discussed requirements are chlorophyll sunlight carbon dioxide and water so what would be the overall equation it will be carbon dioxide which is taken in through stomata plus water in presence of chlorophyll and sunlight so what will be obtained what is the food the food which is prepared is stored in the form of starch and what is starch it is a polysaccharide that means starch is made up of too many glucose units so what is the food that is prepared that is glucose and glucose is c6h12o6 this is glucose so glucose plus water plus oxygen so now in order to balance this equation so now this is a balanced chemical equation so what happens carbon dioxide and water combine to form glucose in presence of chlorophyll and sunlight now along with glucose water is also produced and oxygen is emitted so oxygen is a by product of the process of photosynthesis so what will happen to this oxygen this oxygen is released out of the plants so that is why you would have studied in your junior classes that plants take in carbon dioxide and plants give out oxygen that's because plants need ox uh, carbon dioxide to perform photosynthesis and photosynthesis is the process by which they prepare their food and without food they cannot live so carbon dioxide is something which they need so they take in carbon dioxide and when they perform photosynthesis oxygen is emitted as a by product so this oxygen is kind of an unnecessary thing which is getting produced so that is why they release the oxygen back to the atmosphere so this equation tells us the entire process of photosynthesis now other than these i mean it is not that for a plant to live healthy it is only chlorophyll sunlight carbon dioxide and water which is needed other than these also plants also need many other nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus sulfur etc so those nutrients are again classified into macronutrients and micronutrients depending upon the requirements of the plants there are some nutrients which are needed in large amounts they are called macronutrients there are some nutrients which are needed in lesser amounts and they are known as micronutrients right so now the starch which is produced as a result so now many such glucose molecules will be produced and several glucose molecule will join together to form starch and starch will be stored as food inside the plants now where is the starch stored it is stored in the leaves but plants have many other parts as well it has got fruits it has got stems it has got branches and each and every part of the plant needs the food so how is that starch carried to the different parts starch is carried to the different parts of the plant through a vascular tissue called phloem we have studied about phloem in the lesson on tissues in class 9th right anyways we will discuss about that again as we talk about transportation right so for now photosynthesis is clear so let us quickly review the steps of photosynthesis and order so the first thing that happens is absorption of light energy by chlorophyll so the green pigment present inside the leaves they will absorb the light energy from sunlight conversion of this light energy into chemical energy and splitting of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen so this light energy is converted to chemical energy and the water molecule splits into hydrogen and oxygen and that hydrogen is emitted out as a gas reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates so here we saw on the left hand side of the equation so if you look at the equation once again it was co2 plus h2o gives c6h12o6 plus 6h2o plus o2 so here you can see what's happening this water molecule actually splits into hydrogen and oxygen and that is why this oxygen gets released 
Similarly, this carbon dioxide gets reduced to carbohydrate. Glucose is a carbohydrate, right? So this is a carbohydrate. Clear? So these are the three basic steps of photosynthesis. I hope this video was useful. Our agenda for the next video would be aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Now that's a very critical concept and it is very important that you understand it really well. So stay tuned.